morning guys, Dave Canterbury back with another video in the 21st Century Long Hunter series. Um, we shot a video last weekend while we were in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan on harvesting tinder fungus. And I took my axe and harvested some true tinder fungus off of a white birch tree. White birch and yellow birch are the places that true tinder fungus, or chaga as it's known, grow. Now, many other funguses and polyspores that grow on trees, even horseshoe funguses, will work as a tender fungus. Okay, They have to be dried out. That's a common misconception that only certain ones will work. Most of them will work. Some will not, but most of them will if they're dried out. The secret is in the processing. A lot of misconception that I've seen with tender fungus is people believe that you can take it from the tree and make fire with it, and that's not the case. Okay, It's very much like char cloth in that you don't have to char it like char cloth, but it does have to be dried out. Okay, That tinder fungus will have to be set in front of a fire and help you affect the next fire or the next several fires. It's not going to help you start a fire that day if you don't have other means because it's not dry enough. I have taken tinder fungus, even dried, bone dried, I'm going to show you a demonstration on this video, and struck it with flint and steel multiple times and it did not catch fire. The secret is in the processing, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. The first thing I want to show you is what tender fungus looks like when it's harvested and the difference in what it looks like dried out, and we're going to get a close-up view of that. Then we're going to go through some exercises to show you how to use your tender fungus and how to process it correctly, so stay with me. Okay, guys, so the first thing I want to do, I'm going to pull my haversack off here. I want to show you, I showed you in the video what the tender fungus looked like that we harvested in Michigan and I have a piece of it right here and it has not been dried out yet okay and this is a chunk of the tender fungus I harvested in Michigan and you can see it has this yellow spongy layer in it and that's what you really want some of the darker stuff's okay but it's not the best the black stuff no good now all of this can be used medicinally and that's the big advantage to chaga true tender fungus over the others is it's great medicinal value as a tea or an infusion it's full of antioxidants, it's full of vitamin B, it has anti-tumor characteristics which have to be pulled out through the use of a tincture. But you can read the article that Matt Brooks wrote in this month's issue or the current issue of Self-Reliance Illustrated Magazine and there's a very, very good article on tender fungus in there. Um, so what I want to talk about now is processing and use for fire building, not necessarily medicinal value, although it does have great medicinal value. So don't get rid of this stuff because you can use it medicinally, but this is the part you want for your fire. Now, you'll have to cut this out, and once you cut that out into chunks, it will look very much like this. Okay? You can see these are orange chunks that were cut from this same piece of tinder fungus on another side of it, this other side. Now, this stuff has been dried out, and the way I dried this out was using the stove in the yurt, I just put it on a rack above the top of the stove and let it burn all night. So a low temperature, so it wouldn't burn. And now it's so light now, you, if you pick this up, you can tell. This is wet, and you'll know when you pick this up, it's light as a feather. This is dry, okay? But even at that point, with it being dry, it really doesn't take a spark well when it comes to flint and steel. Not in, not in this state. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to take a piece of flint and steel here, and we'll hit it with a few sparks, and we'll look at it. And you'll see that it's really not going to take a spark. And then we'll come back and look at it in a couple different ways as well. Okay. I'm sure you can see the sparks coming off of this all over the place. I'm dropping sparks all over this tinder fungus. Okay. The problem is that these sparks are not hot enough with the surface area that you've got here and the fact that this is a compressed material for it to catch fire. Now, if I use a ferrocium rod, it's a whole different story. A ferrocium rod throws a lot hotter sparks than the flint and steel kit does. So the ferrocium rod will actually combust this. So we'll take a ferrocium rod and we'll take a piece of this and we'll hit it a few times here. See what we can do here. Let me kind of pile this up so I can direct my sparks into one spot. See what we can do here. A 
Okay. You can see that's on fire in multiple places with the ferrocium rod. So a ferrocium rod will do the job, and there's another one on fire right there. The problem with this stuff is, is you about got to cut the ember out of it, or it's going to burn the whole piece. Because once it does catch on fire, it stays burning for a long time. So you really about have to cut your ember out of it to keep it from burning, or it's just going to keep on going on you. Or smother it out by putting it in a container. But you can see how much you're getting off. I mean, look at the huge amount of smoke and coal you're getting from that piece of tinder fungus right there. And this one's still burning. Even after I've tried to cut out of it what was burning, it's still on fire. So as far as carrying fire goes and things like that, you know, this stuff is the bomb for sure for that. Now I'm just going to have to kind of play with this one to get it put out. Or let it burn up, one of the two. But the easy way to really get this to combust with flint and steel is to grind it up. Almost like you're trying to create an ember for like a magnifying glass fire. This thing is just burning, burning, burning. Look at that. It just does not want to go out. I'm cutting it out continuously and that thing is just still burning white hot. Look at that. I mean, that thing is not going out, guys. Neither one of these pieces are going to go out. You can see them sitting there just burning wide open. So if you've got a ferrocium rod and you can dry this stuff out, then you got something. There's no question about that because you got a huge coal there. You'd want to cut that down into some smaller pieces, most likely, so that you're not wasting big chunks like this to start a fire with to use as an ember. But this was for demonstration purpose so I wanted to show you what this stuff will really do but as far as a fair CM rod goes this stuff is the king now if you want to catch this on fire I'm gonna move this out of the way onto a hot rock here and just set it aside we'll let that burn for a few minutes and move this out of the way now if you want to catch some of this on fire with your flint and steel kit and you want to do it in a more traditional manner then what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to take something like your axe and you're gonna to have to pound this up a little bit and break it up and you're gonna have to make it more of a powder basically what you're doing with that is you're increasing the surface area and you are making it less dense it is highly combustible obviously so really what you're trying to do is make it less dense and make it more of a powdered form and if you break that up and you make the surface area a lot bigger that can catch sparks or small embers you can catch this stuff on fire with a flint and steel kit but it's all in the processing of how you do this stuff. And you don't want to over process it either. So now I'm just going to kind of take it up in my hands and grind it up a little bit. And I won't have to get too overzealous about this. It doesn't have to necessarily be a powder. It just has to be ground down into very small fine chunks. And then I'll take and I'll scrape that all into a pile. Like this. And then we'll try with the flint and steel again. Okay, we evidently don't have anything small enough yet. Oh, there we go. There it goes right there. I'm sure you can see that wisp of smoke coming off of there. And that's all it takes. Once you get that going, then you can just kind of pile that stuff up on there. And nurse it. And it will flame up on you. I shouldn't say flame up. It will turn into a large ember that you can use to blow a tinder bundle to flame. Okay, that thing's getting big now. Now I'm convinced that's not going to go out no matter what I do. So I can just let that sit there and smolder until it makes a great big ember that looks very similar to these that I've got on the rock over here. You can see those are giant coal-sized embers right there. I mean, even if you got marginal tinder, you're going to get something with that. You'll get a fire going. 
So this tinder fungus is definitely, you know, worth collecting and worth having. And like I said, it's not only the chaga that will work. You can use other types of horseshoe fungus. You're just going to have to play with them. You're going to have to process them. You're going to have to harvest them from the tree, dry them out real good, get into the insides of them, and get it you know, ground up into something that you can work with. Try it with your ferrocium rod, try it with flint and steel, and see which one works for you, and then you'll understand because a lot of guys that live south you know, don't have access to tinder fungus, true tinder fungus, like chaga. Chaga only grows in the north. It grows all around the world you know, above a certain latitude, basically. So any, anywhere north of Ohio. I mean, Ohio doesn't have tender fungus because we don't have the right trees here. But the yellow birch and the white birch that grow up in Michigan, they got tender fungus everywhere. The farther north and the farther cold, or the more cold it is, uh, longer year round, I think the more tender fungus there is, it seems to me like, from talking to guys up there in the Upper Peninsula. But you can see it's very good stuff. It's worth its weight in gold as far as fire tender goes, as well as medicinally. So I hope you enjoyed this video on kind of how to process this stuff after harvest to use it for your fire kit. You could keep small chunks of it like this in your fire kit and you'd be good to go. And you can also use it medicinally, like I said, but I urge you to research that and also to read Matt Brooks' article in last month's issue or the current issue of Self-Reliance Illustrated Magazine. Okay, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this second part in the series, um, 21st Century Long Hunter on harvesting and using tinder fungus. You know, don't take my word for it. Go out and practice this stuff. Try it for yourself. Find out what works. What's important is what works for you, not necessarily what works for me. I'm just trying to give you some tips and tricks that I've found to work for me, and I hope they work for you as well. Don't forget to pass on the tribal knowledge to someone else. I thank you for your views. I thank you for your support. And I appreciate everything that you do for me, my business, and my family. And I'll be back with another video as soon as possible.